Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you all can hear me, actually. But always a joy to come and share. I feel like I've had a few other things stirring in my spirit recently. So it's been great to do these a little bit more often. And as always, please let me know where you are tuning in from. Where are you watching from? Again, I am just so thrilled to always come in and share with you folks. And a special welcome to those who partner with LM Sparks Ministries. Lots going on right now. God is on the move. I want you to be encouraged in the middle of all the swirl right now. God is moving significantly. We've got Illinois joining. Let me know where you're watching because listen, even as you're writing in your territories, you're writing in your city, this word applies directly to you. And I believe how you can impact the sphere of influence where you live, that city where you live. So welcome, greetings as you're coming in. Again, always a joy to hear where you're watching from. Uh, Australia, come on, Sarah Jane. I'll be in Australia in June. Wonderful. Illinois, I was just in Illinois. And I can tell you, God is moving in both of those places. We saw a wonderful outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Illinois, in the Chicago area. Australia has been in a season of wonderful revival for quite a while. So yes, welcome everybody. Matthews, South Africa. Greetings, greetings. Good morning. Yes, I forget. Different times at different places. Anyway, always a joy to come and connect with you. I really believe, and this is a very strange title, Can God Find You? Can God Find You? Watching from Ghana, well, blessings, blessings. My prayer right now as you're all coming on and joining, I pray in Jesus' name that there would be an impartation released for each of you on behalf of your region and on behalf of your territory. And I'm going to dive right on into the word this evening, this is going to be more of a teaching, although I live in a place where Holy Spirit's allowed to do whatever he wants, and he can hijack this at any time. But I want to share to you a word that the Lord has been stirring in my heart. And it's interesting because it's something from Scripture I think we've misunderstood a little bit. And I don't have time to unpack the whole thing, but I just want to throw this at you to pray through. In Ezekiel 22, verse 30. It's a passage of scripture we're quite familiar with. But listen to what the Lord says. Verse 30 of Ezekiel 22. He says, I searched for a man. I think it could be anybody, a man, a woman, a person. Among them who would repair the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land so that I might not destroy it. But I found no one. Now, how many of you have heard the phrase, stand in the gap, or we use that to describe the act of intercession? When I'm interceding or praying for someone, I'm standing in the gap. In other words, I am praying a prayer that that person is presently and most likely not praying. I feel the Holy Ghost right now, because even as I said that phrase, I, I, I really sense what the Lord is wanting to communicate to us through this portion of scripture. I'm praying a prayer. Think about the prodigals in your life. Think about those who are running away from God. Think about those who don't even know God. You're praying a prayer that most likely they're not praying. But guess what? When you pray a prayer that's in agreement with what God says, when you pray words, when you speak words, when you make decrees, when you offer up petitions and intercessions that are in agreement with what the word of God says, then guess what? You're bringing your voice into agreement with what God is saying, and God gets what he says. You're not ordering God to do something. You're not commanding God to do something. You're not demanding God to do something. You are coming into agreement with what God says and with what God wants, okay? So here's the deal. When you're praying for those who don't know Jesus, they're not born again, or they are running away from God, we use the word prodigal, backsliding. I don't necessarily, I mean, I get it. I get, I get the language because it describes somebody who's turning back, going back from the Lord. Either way, do you know what we do? We pray. We take our place as intercessors who pray the kind of prayers that we wish they would be praying. And we trust that even from a distance, we trust that even as they are going in an opposite direction from the Lord, that our prayers are making a difference because we are standing in the gap. 
I'm sure you've used that language, okay? Here's the deal though, okay? That is an applicable and relevant principle to praying for prodigals, for those who don't know Jesus, those running away from God. Yes, applicable, relevant principle. But when we read the scriptures, do you know what's the most important thing to read is context. Who and what is that particular passage being addressed to? And honestly, yes, relevant principle for standing in the gap. But Ezekiel 22, verse 30, I, I want you to track with me, okay? Because this is a big deal. God is not searching for someone that is willing to pray for a lost loved one. Just play track with me, okay? Okay. Because my question is, can God find you? Now, listen. We're supposed to pray for those who don't know Jesus. That's just part of being a believer. We're supposed to make petitions for those who are running away from God, prodigals. Yes. But in context, you got to hear this because this is going to make you excited. You got to hear this because this is the secret to living in perpetual revival. You got to hear this because this is the secret to praying the kind of prayers that have some juice on them, that have the wind of God on them, that have the fire of God on them. I tell you, it is illegal for a Christian to endure boring prayer meetings and a dull prayer life. I want to just release that over somebody right now. Whether you're watching live or you're watching later, it's illegal for you to endure or tolerate boredom in your prayer life. But do you know what? Do you know what the great culprit of boredom is? I'll tell you, it is robotic routine. I'm ready to run around the room because I feel like revelations coming forth. Robotic routine. In other words, I get my prayer list. I'm, I'm going to sit in the room and I'm going to turn off the lights. and I'm going to turn on some mood music and I'm going to read a list and I'll pray these things to God. Why? Not because my heart burns, but because I feel like this is the thing to do. And if I don't do it, then I'm going to feel bad and guilty. I want to relieve and I want to release somebody from that right now in the name of Jesus. I want to prophesy over you. That prayer is not boring. It's full of life. Now, I understand prayer is a discipline. I understand your flesh fights it. I understand those things. doesn't mean that you are supposed to sit in a dark room with massage music on. I say massage music because when you go to the massage places, massage envy or whatever, it's just this, ah, oh, it's great music. Now, there's a time for that. There's a time for soaking. I, I, I get it. But here's the deal. Not all of us connect with God in that kind of way. I don't. I don't, I say this all the time, but it bears repeating to liberate some people from stinky religion. I don't connect with God just sitting around in my office. I've met him here. I have glorious times in his presence here, but this is not my place where I regularly and routinely meet with God. I don't know where your place is, but I'm sure you have one. And please don't feel like my place needs to be your place. Don't feel like the preacher who you love listening to, and I love listening to a lot of preachers, and a lot of them inspire me and motivate me, but don't feel like their place needs to be your place. I'm saying something right now. I'm preaching right now. Do you understand what I mean? Where do you connect with God? Where do you meet him? Where are you close to him? Where are you aware of his presence? Where do you sense him? Because that's the place that I believe you should pursue him. That's the place. I, you know, the, we, we can't try to make our time with God look like anyone else's because he has a personal and unique relationship with each and every one of us. I believe in the prayer meetings. I believe we need more of them. And I believe the prayer meeting should be the most important thing and the most important meeting and the most attended meeting that we do at church. That's my, I, yes, we need to do that. That's corporate prayer. I'm not talking about corporate prayer. I'm talking about your personal prayer life with God, okay? So please don't feel like you have to do what other people do. But here's the second thing, because if we feel like, well, I got to do my duty of prayer and I got to get out my list here and I got to read Sister Sally and Brother Bob and I got to pray for this person, I got to pray for that person, it becomes a drag, okay? Pray. Yes, we do offer up our petitions for the Lord. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to liberate some people because I pray for a group of people every day. Some of them I don't pray for every day. Um, I pray as the Holy Spirit leads, but I do I do have a prayer list. I have one on my phone. And these are people that I am praying for regularly, routinely, because I'm contending for a breakthrough. That's legal. That is absolutely legal. But I don't pray in this robotic, ritualistic way where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to feel the pleasure of God until I go through the list. No, but I have that list handy and available. And I just, 
as I go on my walks and spend time with God, I discern what Holy Spirit wants me to pray, what, what, what the wind of God is blowing on, where I sense the Holy Spirit directing me to pray. But you know what? Here's the thing I want to focus on is that in Ezekiel 22, we read about standing in the gap. Yes. But for what? And this is a message I'm going to be unpacking in the next several months as I travel and minister. In fact, just parenthetically, I'm going, I'm going to be in Maine coming up. I, don't, I think I have the information. Bangor, Maine coming up, which will be wonderful. Glad Tidings Church, Bangor, Maine, Sunday, April 21st, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. If you're New England, it'd be a joy to have you come. Because as I've been going up to New England, as a, particularly as I was in uh, Massachusetts, I was gripped over this Ezekiel 22 word. And I believe it is so relevant for territories. It's relevant right now. I'm, I'm thinking about New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut. Thinking of New England, because I feel like what the Lord is doing, not just New England, but across the nations, he's raising up a company of people who would be found by God. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. A company of people who would be found by God. Okay, I'm going to read this one more time. We'll unpack it. We'll pray. But Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Listen, listen to this. God says, I searched. My goodness. I searched for a man. I searched for a person. A person that was standing again. Think about that language, though. I search. God is actually searching. He is looking. Yeah, he knows where we all are. We, we get that. But, you know, God is eagerly looking and listening. My goodness. I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Not for somebody who's just going through the routine and ritual of going through a prayer list. Uh, a prayer list. Yes, he'll answer those prayers. Yes, he's faithful. Uh, yes, he shows up. You understand that. But there is a special, dare I say, manifestation of the presence of God. There's a unique manifestation of God's presence. Oh, there's this connection with his heart. There's a connection with his will, his plans and purposes. Oh God, what's your will and plan and purpose for me? One of the greatest disservices to the body of Christ was the inappropriate quest, dare I say, idolatrous quest that was birthed by the seeker-sensitive movement back in the 90s or so. This quest for my purpose. I'm going to preach. My, oh God, what's your plan and purpose for me? Me, 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 me. And out of that, I believe, came the noxious, toxic, me-centered, pep-talk gospel. It's no gospel at all. I don't have time to go into that tonight. But it's rubbish. But there was this quest, and I dare say it was an idolatrous quest that put people on the spiritual hamster wheel, always trying to ask God, what's your plan and purpose for my life? Can I just liberate a few folks from that? Okay, let's stop asking that question. Wrong question. God, what's your plan and purpose for my life, my life, my life? Do you know what the best thing we could possibly do is? God, what is your plan and purpose for blank. Start macro. Go, what's your plan and purpose for the earth? What's your plan and purpose for my city? What's your plan and purpose for, for uh, the people group that you've endured my heart to? What's your plan and purpose for the sphere of influence that you've given me gifts and talents to, to, to minister to and serve? What's your plan and purpose in the earth? And I want to specifically focus right now, God, what's your plan and purpose for my city, for my territory, for my region? Um, for, for the schools that my kids go to, for the government, for, for the downtown area. What, what's your plan and purpose there? Because I want to participate in that. And obviously there's so many ways we can do that. But the first thing we need to do, the first place where we participate in the plan and purpose of God is we become the kind of people that he's searching for. And you know what the kind of person that God is searching for is? It's the man, it's the woman, it's the child, it's the voice who says, God, I ain't here to stand in the gap and intercede and pray simply for some people and some situations and some problems in my life. Yes, God responds to those things, and that's important. He is looking for a people who take ownership of the land. There's a fire that God wants to release. I'm going to say something right now that might make your head blow back. It's okay. 
Listen, so many of us with a good heart and a good motive, we go from prayer meeting to prayer meeting, conference to conference, event to event, prayer line to prayer line, fire tunnel to fire tunnel. It's often motivated by a burning heart, a genuine heart, a genuine hunger that says, God, I want to touch you. Oh, God, I had this wonderful, powerful touch by your presence, and I want to repeat it. I want to recreate it. I want to live in that. That is a wonderful place to live. But we do not appropriately sustain that. Hi, yes, say. We don't appropriately sustain our burning zeal for the manifest presence of God, for that fire of revival. I do not believe we appropriately can sustain it by going conference to conference and becoming event junkies. And we need conferences and we need events. I do them. But you understand what I'm saying? Do you know how you sustain that fire for God. You know how you can live in perpetual revival? Be the kind of person that God's always looking for. Ha! Be the kind of person that God is always searching for. Be the kind of person who comes into agreement with what God wants to do in your territory and region. Be the kind of person who elevates your prayer life simply beyond your petitions and requests for yourself and for those in your sphere of influence. Do that important, vital, but perhaps even just for three to five minutes, start praying for your territory. Pray, Joel 2 and Acts 2, over where you live. God, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit in the middle school where my kid goes to school. Pour out your spirit in the downtown area where, where there are adult bookstores and there are strip clubs and there's human trafficking and there's prostitution. Lord, pour out your spirit, God. I mean, in the halls of government, in town hall. Pour out your spirit, God. If you live in Florida, California, wherever, pour out your spirit, God, on those areas that are hotbeds for spring break immorality and promiscuity and fornication. God, pour out your spirit. Do something unusual, Lord, and you can use me. We start through prayer, but then we become the answers of our prayers. Huh. It's not long after our encounters with God in prayer and intercession that he says here, okay. I'm searching for the one who will be a voice and who will be a vessel. We've talked about that. Who will be a voice and who will be a vessel. But God is looking. Okay, I can't unpack all this. I am going to share this in depth in Maine. Oh, I, I left it up here. Glad Tidings Church, Bangor, Maine. I believe it's a word for the territory there. Being a voice and being a vessel on behalf of your territory. If you want to live in perpetual revival, Again, so many of us are trying to live in sustained revival, and we think it's going from event to event. Now, events can be very helpful because I believe corporately they help keep the fire burning, and we need to do that. That's why I've been doing what I've been doing in South Florida for 10 years is the Holy Spirit gave me and Pastor Norman Benz this vision, keep the fire burning. He sends fire on the altar. You and I are responsible for keeping it burning. I think that's a beautiful picture we see, I believe, in Leviticus chapter 6. God sends fire on the altar. He is responsible for the fire, but you and I are the ones who actually keep that fire burning. I just think of the Billy Joel song. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> God did. God started the fire and you and I are responsible for stewarding it. So I just wanted to share that word uh, very quickly is God is searching. He's looking for something. Can God find you? Will you be a voice and will you be a vessel? And particularly, will you be the kind of voice that says, God, I will pray on behalf of my territory. I will stand in the gap for the land. And I really believe God will speak through you. God will meet you. You will experience wonderful, radical encounters in, in his presence as you partner with his activity in the territory that he's either placed you in or he's put on your heart. So I just wanted to share that uh, this evening. Um, and I pray that the Lord blessed you with this word. Again, look forward to seeing some of you in New England, Bangor, Maine, coming on up on April 21st. I put up the information at Glad Tidings Church. All right. See you soon.